Trey Lance has put his best case to be drafted high in the National Football League. Dan Orlovsky, you've been looking at the tape. What can we see? I think Trey Lance has a superpower, and it's called playing fast, but he's never in a hurry. It's a lot like Russell Wilson. So what does it look like? You're going to see this play action pass, right? So they're going to get this slot receiver on that jet motion. We see it all the time in the NFL, and they're really trying to take advantage of this safety up top right here. This safety's responsibility is kind of this half the field. So they're going to get this play action, this jet sweep motion, and a play action pass to take a shot downfield. So what does it look like to play fast? Now, when they do that and they take that shot downfield, their number one is going to be really this crack, fake cross, and post, right? Get that safety to jump up and take the shot over the top. That's number one in the progression. And then number two is going to be the bottom of the screen. You're going to get this comeback route by this receiver. So it's really a two-man pass concept that they're trying to take advantage of. The jet motion goes there, and it's going to be a little bit of a half roll, right? Trey Lance's job is to go look like I'm sprinting out to the left, and that receiver is going to come on that big crosser, right? The first thing to pay attention to is the athleticism. Half roll and flip of the hips, okay? You see that half roll? Imagine sprinting full speed to one way, and then you've got to quickly get your hips aligned to throw to number one. Play fast, that's the athleticism. Now get your eyes on it, right there. Did that safety jump up? Did he take the cheese when it comes to the play action pass? Eyes on that safety, he's not there. Now pay attention to the second aspect of this. Number one's not there, number two. Now you see how he flips his hips open? If Trey Lance kept his, his hips downfield, and try to throw that comeback to the left, he's closed off. He can't get the ball there. He's got to open up his hips quickly to be able to drive that comeback to the sideline. That's well done. While he's about to get hit, find the comeback and make an accurate throw. Bang, ball placement is really well done right there. But to show how fast it is, I want to rewind it because it's really good. This is what playing fast but not in a hurry looks like. Okay, decision making. Again, you're going to get that motion. There's that double crack crosser post and number two on the comeback. Now watch the clock. We put this on a clock to see how happen, fast it happens. All that happens, one, two, three. Remember, 1.6 seconds. He went half roll, flipped the hips. He saw number one wasn't there, not there. Got his hips opened up and found number two on that comeback in 1.7 seconds, okay? That is playing fast. Have the ball placement receiver, now make the catch, okay? That's playing fast, but never in a hurry. A lot of quarterbacks, when they try to play fast, it's hurried. We make bad decisions, the ball placement's poor, we don't know what we're doing. That's a superpower for Trey Lance. That is his absolute strength. That, that's, that's so well done, as I want to bring the rest of the guys back in here because he's such a fascinating prospect. And I guess one of the reasons is because, I mean, <laughs> realistically, the overwhelming majority of people watching the show have never seen him play. He started 17 games from North Dakota State. They only played one game this season. They, they didn't have a season. They created one <clears> game as a showcase for him. Field Gates, you continue to tell me that the 49ers are going to take Mac Jones. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, suggesting that you're wrong. But I guess I would <clears> ask, <throat> as we watch stuff like that, projecting this out three years, if everything goes well, what is it Mac Jones is going to do better than Trey Lance does as a National Football League quarterback three years from now? Well, Mac Jones has exceptional accuracy. I understand he had amazing wide receivers and a great offensive line, but he set the single season completion mark in Division I at nearly 78% completion percentage a year ago. He's an outstanding leader as well. He's well built. This is a guy who may not be six foot five, but close to six foot three, and a guy who's played in high leverage moments already, Greeny. I think what's important to do at this point of the pre draft process is we're not sitting here and saying that the warts of Mac Jones are what should entice you to take Trey Lance. It's more about the positives that each one mm. of them brings to the table. So I do think that Trey Lance's upside is as significant as any quarterback not named Trevor Lawrence in this year's draft. But quarterback and evaluation of quarterback play is very much a personal choice. The 49ers may feel as though the clear-cut best fit for us was not Trevor Lawrence, is Mac Jones. And if they don't see it in Trey Lance like they do in Mac, then you have to go with the player that you believe is the ideal fit. Uh, and that was, that was a quite impressive 1.7 seconds he just had yeah. right there. And again, he's got so <laughs> much room to grow. Mike T, what do you think? I see it very similar, which is if I'm the Atlanta Falcons, because I think that's, this is where everything starts, I take Trey Lance for a lot of the reasons we saw what Dan just broke down is we see all the things on tape that it takes to be a successful NFL quarterback. <laughs> With that said, I would not want to play him from day one 
because it is a massive leap to go from the FCS all the way to the NFL. And if I'm the Falcons, I try to win with Matt Ryan. I want to establish Arthur Smith as my head coach. But to your point, Greeny, in three years from now, it's hard to argue against what Trey Lance has shown and what he can do. So I think they're the ideal fit. I think Mac Jones going to San Francisco is what we've all thought for a while. But three years from now, if I'm Atlanta, I am sitting pretty with a high character, highly, highly talented Trey Lance. And we could run a great play from going from Matt Ryan to Trey Lance and never look back. And people who spend any time around him just rave about yeah. him, by the way, about Trey Lance for what that's worth, which I think it's worth a lot. Danny, final word, go. I think a good parallel for Trey Lance is Josh Allen in Buffalo. And the things and reasons why it worked with Josh Allen in Buffalo was, one, the organization said, you're, you're, we're going to develop you. We are committed to supporting your development. Two, the coaching staff said, okay, we know what we need to fix, how we can accentuate your strengths. We're going to be in that journey with you as well. And then the player did it. Josh Allen committed to that development. That's why we've seen him get incrementally better. And that's really what Trey Lance is going to need is all that support, organizational coach and player. And the great thing the Bills did was they supported his development while not burdening him with the need to win football games. Because once the quarterback thinks, I got to win at all costs, they revert back to old habits and the development goes away. And that's why it's so important for all those pieces to be aligned for Trey Lance to go become what he can in the NFL. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.